Hi, welcome to this follow-up Friday video. Yesterday, uh, the people at Joranalog uh, uploaded another Tech Thursday video. And in this video, Johan showed us how to use feedback patching on uh, filter 8 to create different kinds of wave shapes, because normally when you just use a self-oscillating filter, this produces sine waves, but well, by using feedback, you can create waves that have a lot more resemblance uh, with saw waves. You did a very good job at showing and explaining uh, how it all behaves, and well, he did it in stereo, so that's something that I always find a lot more interesting. But instead of just doing the same thing over again, I, of course, did something else in this video. Let's have a look at the system. By now we probably all know that when you crank up the resonance of a filter, well, for most filters this works, you can get that filter to self-oscillate. I've patched the first output of filter 8 here. It's going through bias 2, but I'm just using the unity gain output and I've patched the signal through to the scope. So you can see the perfect sign that filter 8 gives us. And we get a perfect sign for all of these outputs, but you can see that the amplitude for these different outputs is a little bit different. This one is really hot. When you engage the compensation switch, this takes care a little bit of these uh, differences in amplitude. Well, a little bit. It seems to be pretty much spot on. And this is useful when, well, for example, using different outputs of filter 8 in low mode uh, for doing modulation around your system and you want uh, the levels to be consistent or even as uh, a VCO. When you're using two outputs in stereo, you probably want them to be, well, the same volume. Right now I'm just using one output. If you want to hear how this filter sounds uh, when used as a VCO in stereo, you should watch the video that uh, Johan uploaded, because he's uh, demonstrating the feedback patch in stereo. But let's switch off the compensation circuit and let's introduce some feedback. The feedback I will be exploring is just using uh, one of, well, one of the seven spare outputs and I will patch this signal into the exponential FM input. And then when you turn up, well, or down this knob, you can see how feeding back one of the outputs of filter 8 into the frequency modulation makes filter 8 create these different waves and well you can see and hear it as well that this starts to resemble a saw wave doing these kind of feedback patches uh, usually changes the frequency as well so if you want to use the filter 8 saw wave patch in a patch you should take into account that you will need to retune a filter 8 every time you change the shape of the sound and if you want to do modulation of this parameter by using an external uh, VCA your pitch will also fluctuate depending on the level of modulation that you send in here. Now with a filter like filter 8 it's almost easy to forget that 
besides using it as an LFO or a VCO with variable wave shapes, you can of course just use it to filter an external signal. I will be using Generate 3. Let's quickly look at how the wave looks here. Let's make a saw wave out of that. Well, more or less. So that's the signal that I will be using to send into the actual audio input of filter 8. But let's turn down this uh, FM feedback for now. And I will use the divide by 2 output of bias 2 here just to tame my signals a little bit. This is something that you could do when you're using external line level equipment um, and you don't want the signal coming out of your system to be as hot. Of course, this does not uh, resolve uh, possible uh, ground loop issues. This is not a balanced DI module. But when you're in a pinch, it could work. So this is just a saw wave from Generate 3 going through filter 8. Sometimes people claim that filter 8 does not have a lot of character. But well, it still sounds really, really good. Especially when you start doing these feedback kind of patches. Let's turn down the resonance and I will introduce the same feedback uh, as before. But I found that for this kind of patch it's best to use one of these outputs. Otherwise the phases start to cancel each other. But let's just Turn up the feedback and you can already see how the shape of the output is changing now when I start turning the frequency knob. We get all this bubbly goodness. And when I turn up the resonance a bit... And I think this is something worth exploring if you have a filter 8. You can use different outputs for the feedback. And you can just use another filter output altogether. Which all give us subtly, subtle, subtlety, subtly, subtle variations of this behavior. Now let's connect a sequence to my uh, oscillator here. I'm going to use the EP output of orbit 3 as a clock for step 8, which is over here. Let's use an output of this second generate 3 here as a source for step 8 to sample. I'm using the scan output of step 8 routed through to a quantizer and I'm sending the output of that quantizer to my VCO here. Of course, I have to add some 
delay to this. And some reverb from the quadraverb. I want to also automate the turning of this knob. And since there's still the full productive input, I can use that one. I'm going to use the fundamental output on this generate 3 here, which is running at uh, LFO frequencies, by the way, to modulate the frequency of the filter. If you're using the full product of input uh, for modulation, unless you want it to be all over the place, it's best to attenuate your signal first. before sending it in here. If you really want filter 8 to go completely ballistic, you can of course also send one of its outputs back to its input. You have to experiment a bit on which outputs to use. Just a little warning, this will probably clip something along the way. this and well if you're playing around with filter 8 don't forget to try the linear FM every once in a while This is going to be it for this follow-up Friday video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye.